I have like a terrible sunburn right now and I'm trying to work out if you can tell. Oh my God, hey, welcome back to my theatre themed YouTube channel. If you don't know me, my name is Mickey Joe. I'm a theatre critic, content creator and fan. And this weekend I went to West End Live, which is also the story behind the sunburn. Don't do what I did, make good choices. So if you don't know, West End Live is an annual celebration of West End shows organized by the Society of London Theatre in conjunction with the city of Westminster. It takes place in Trafalgar Square in London, usually over a weekend in June, and the idea is that most of the musicals in the West End will perform 10-minute slots, uh, performing a few songs from the show. But as well as all the big musicals, you get upcoming shows, and off-West End shows, and regional shows. It's really very exciting. This year's event was hosted by the stars of the upcoming new musical The Time Traveller's Wife, Heba El Sheikh and Tim Mahendran, and it featured performances from almost every musical currently playing in the West End. So I'm just going to do a little bit of an introduction to try and answer some of the questions that you might might have about this, and then I'm going to show you all of the footage that I managed to capture on the day. So this event takes place over two days. There is a Saturday and a Sunday. I only went to the Saturday. I was planning to go to both days, but I would have needed to leave pretty early on the Sunday anyway to go to a gala performance of a new musical that's opening. And honestly, we were completely shattered after standing all day on the Saturday. So we just wanted the lion rather than waking up again early on the Sunday. Which brings me to probably the biggest question about West End Live. What time should you arrive? So I am thrilled that this event has become as popular as it has, and musical theatre is becoming this cool mainstream thing that the young people are excited about. But West End Live has now grown to such a proportion that Trafalgar Square cannot contain the number of people who are interested in attending this event. Because what happened is not everyone who queued up could actually make it into Trafalgar Square by some margin. I think at the point that they first had to close the queue because of capacity, people were still queuing all the way back to Holborn. Now, feel free to Google how far that is from Trafalgar Square. It's a long way. And they can get a lot of people in Trafalgar Square. This is how many people showed up for West End Live, honestly thousands. Now we weren't super keen on being really near the front. I wanted to be able to chat to people and interview people. As it happened, I didn't get to do too much of that because it was just so busy. So mostly what you're going to get is just my Graham Norton Eurovision style commentary of the whole thing, which I hope you enjoy anyway. But we turned up at 9.45 and we got off at Piccadilly Circus because we thought the queue was going to be a little further back than Trafalgar Square, but we still had to walk basically most of the way to Tottenham Court Road. We joined the queue just past the Wyndham's Theatre where Oklahoma is currently playing and it queued from there down past the Garrick, back up the other side of the road into the top corner of Leicester Square, round three sides of Leicester Square, back out past the Prince of Wales Theatre where the Book of Mormon is, left down towards Haymarket, past the Theatre Royal Haymarket with His Majesty's Theatre where Phantom is on the other side, taking a final left and then into Trafalgar Square. So on the Saturday, the event itself starts at 11. I think they start letting people in at 10.15. My advice to you would be you absolutely have to join the queue before this, I think definitely before 10 a.m. I mean, who's to say what's gonna happen next year and whether they will actually move to a bigger venue, but if it all remains the same, I think you have to be in before 10 a.m. because the people that we saw passing us a few minutes after we joined the queue weren't able to get in for a decent amount of time. Now we missed the first performance, we missed Frozen, but we were queuing up as The Lion King was performing because as we were getting ready to go into Trafalgar Square, they had these big screens uh, for the people who hadn't got all the way in yet, which was a nice touch, but it did very little for the many people queuing many streets back. I know that some people were queuing from seven o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the morning. There were rumors that some people were actually sleeping overnight so that they could be right at the front. Obviously getting there that early might not be practical or feasible for some of you who are traveling from further away. And honestly, I think this is just a massive problem at this point because if people are having to sleep on the street, if young people are having to sleep on the street of London because they're that excited and that determined to get to the barrier of West End Live, then that is a failing of the organizers. The reason we have ticket lotteries is because the show Rent was so popular with young audiences that they were camping out on the streets of New York to try and get rush tickets. And the producers decided that this was not a good idea. And so out of concern for those prospective audience members, they introduced the lottery. Now, I don't want West End Live to stop being a free event, but very possibly it might have to become ticketed to some extent to stop A, the disappointment of fans traveling in from farther afield who aren't even able to get into Trafalgar Square, and B, 
the people sleeping on the street. Now, when we initially got into Trafalgar Square, it seemed super busy. We went and had a look at merch. I will show you some more of the merch in the video, but this is merch that I'm wearing here. Technically it's Aaron's, but I've stolen it. And we stood up on the top level for a bit, assuming that there was no space down at the bottom, but then we went around the left-hand side and it turns out there actually was a lot of space behind one of the fountains on the left. And you'll see in the video, we gradually managed to move across and then further down towards the front, not because we were pushing forwards, but because people leave over the course of the day. A lot of the bigger shows are performing earlier in the morning because they have to get off to a two o'clock or a 2.30 matinee performance. So if you can't get to West End Live first thing in the morning, maybe get there a little bit later in the day to coincide with when it gets a little bit less busy. Certainly by the middle of the afternoon, there was a decent amount of space in Trafalgar Square and I think anyone would have been able to get in fine. Like I said, we didn't go on the Sunday, but I did hear that the queue was a lot more minimal and there were people who turned up a little bit after it started who were able to get in no problem. I'm hoping any more questions that you might have about West End Live will be addressed by what you see in the video. I am going to be reviewing all of the performances from West End Live in a later video, so stay tuned for that one. Make sure you're subscribed. But for now, I hope you enjoy joining me and my stage boyfriend, Aaron James, for day one of West End Live 2023. We have some incredible performances lined up for you today. Can I just hear, who's been to West End Live before? <laughs> Here you can see some of the merch they've got on offer at West End Live. Got all this stuff here, you can see the prices. We got mugs, we got badges, we got programs, we got so many t-shirt designs. Look at some of these. Very cute. Very, very cute. Grease on stage performing Summer Loving as the sun disappears behind a cloud. Is it coming back? It's not a cappella because there is a backing track, but it's very, very, very quiet. They're teething with the sound problems. It's a challenging sound setup as Western Live. Wow, wow, wow. Wait for it. Outstanding work from Erin James. So the cast of Grease just performed Grease Lightning and is it hot in here or is it just me? No, it is, it's really, it's really quite hot out here. The Tina musical definitely hits different now. And I think this is a lovely song choice in light of that. Yeah. There's not enough space around us to do the choreography for Miss Congeniality 2, but I would. Tina the Musical just performed, to my ears, one of the biggest crowd responses so yeah. far. They loved that one. Jukebox musicals play very well to a West End Live crowd. And immediately after Tina, we have Crazy For You. This is what I love about West End Live, you get variety. After a sizable queue to get into the uh, Trafalgar Square area, people are now queuing for what? Hymns. Hymns every which way you look. I'm proud of the British public. If it's outdoors and it's sunny, we're drinking pims. It's the law. I'm not sure how the city of Westminster are going to feel about that bit. There's quite a few children here. <laughs> there are a few children here. Something about following up the Book of Mormon performance with a trailer for The Lion King singing Circle of Life tickles me. Tickles me very much. Phantom about to start performing. I'm trying to see if I can spot a conductor. They usually bring one. Yes, I see one just beyond the fountain. Do the cape swish. Do the cape swish. Swish. Now we're getting All I Ask of You with first cover Christine, or alternate Christine. We love to see understudy representation at West End Live. Why people clapping? Did they kiss? Yeah. Good for them. I get it. It doesn't last. I've seen the sequel. Woo! Don't let him gamble. We have new Phantom John Robbins. He was here last year being Valjean. This year he's Phantom. Who will he be next year? Could be Elphaba. I'm trying to recreate the Phantom faceography with Aaron and he's not going for it. Here comes a big note. Oh 
Oh, they liked that one. Another one. Last year she was here as Elphaba. Now she's Fontaine in Les Mis. It's Lucy Jones. Lou Joe is the nickname I'm trying to push out. Will Susan Boyle come out to join her? I don't think so. One day more is happening, everybody. One day more is happening. This is not a drill. I feel like they, they have to do one day more. Yeah. They can't not do one day more. There's a new world for the There's a new world to be won. Someone capitalized on this. This crowd's ready to march on something. They're not sure what, but they're they're fired up about it nonetheless. Aaron, explain to us what just happened. So it's the trooping of the colour today, so all the military are out for King Charles III. So we've just seen all the aircraft fly over. Real winners over here. The people standing on the roof of the Canadian Embassy. Now you'd be forgiven for seeing this out of context and thinking, ah yes, French. We've got Paige Petty now, one of the new cast members of Oklahoma in the West End, giving us a can't say no. What you gonna do? Hi Harry, uh, what are you most excited to see today? Operation Mincemeat. Operation Mincemeat, I could tell from the yeah. t-shirt, very excited. And so fun to have them at West End Live, right? Exactly, yeah. What's been your favourite so far? Uh, Hamilton. Nice, nice, nice. A staple, a good one. Well, thank you so much, I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much. Oh my God. Are you kidding me with that ending? That was amazing. Oklahoma, 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 Oklahoma. I got stuck on the wrong one. I think that went down quite well. It was a decent set from West End Live newcomers, Oklahoma. Aspects of Love performing now. I'm kind of shocked they're not doing Love Changes Everything. Maybe we'll have that after this. Got a bit of seeing is believing going on first. Do you know I had a feeling you'd say that? Jersey Boy is performing now. Here we go. The Jersey Girls, everybody. Change the backdrop. Everyone look lively. Heads up, people. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Oh, it's hit. And now it's over there. Oh, it's coming back. There it is, there it is, there it is, coming towards us, coming towards us. We're in it, we're in it, and I mean, just that like that's gone. Crazy, to be fair. I hope that was as thrilling you for you at home as it was here. Always my favourite part of their sets. They come out and dramatically take their formations. This is the most intense that Mamma Mia gets. It may be the ABBA musical, but there is a queen on stage. Got a performance from Glory Ride now, currently playing at the Charing Cross. So currently it's just gone 2 o'clock, they are performing a 2.30 show a few metres down the road. have left to head over to the Charing Cross Theatre okay, in a rush. They've got like 15 minutes yeah. before the show. Right Obviously people want to see their faves at West End Live, well but I like I to see well, new musicals. Yeah. Because you have, what do you have here? You have like an audience of captive, here. thousands of captive sure. musical theatre fans uh, who can discover a new musical. It's time for Choir of Man. They've become something of a West End Live staple. This is their third year performing. Very 
crowd pleasing stuff. Sorry, massive. Sorry, massive. So far, do we think yeah. that the choir of man? I know they've just sold a lot of tickets. This is a big response. This yeah. is a big response. I mean, very, very conducive to a British summer crowd. Yeah. A show that debuted at West End Live a few years ago when no one knew what it was. Now they are one of the favourites every year. Opening with Holbein. What a plot twist. This is a different backing. Heart of Stone remix getting dropped today. happening right now. I'm not sure if you've noticed. The subtle. Hot stuff. You have to yell hot stuff. A revival of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. London! Oh, sorry. Turn around. Every now and then I get a little bit. They're not turning around. They're not turning around. Turn around! Tell me why they just introduced Magic Mike Live and then the Les Mis backdrop came on. It's a new, it's a new takeover night. Are they gonna are they gonna dance to I Dream to Dream? Another traditionally crowd-pleasing performance. Who can say why? You know what, I can't blame them. It is very warm out today. Here we are, representing the play that goes wrong and... Thank you! Don't lose your head, Robert! I'm coming! Thank goodness! That was at least two ah, yes. musical references. Dancing his way through life. There's another one. Robert, I am one of a kind. No category. Such as lots of Wicked and Six, I'm hearing. Let's get down and put your hands together to welcome the cast of Rules Will Never Play. Oh, now this is always a lot of fun. I love you, Baltimore. Every day's like an open door. But it's the oh, I can hear the screams of Bonnie and Clyde fans closed recently at the Garrick. But May Tether is bringing the people what they want. Luke Bayer feeling his Leah Michelle fantasy, as he should. And now we have the lovely Grace Moat living her Ben Platt fantasy, giving us a parade. She loves this show. She's told me herself. Sing it, Alan. Got Renee Lamb giving us a bit of Hamilton. He's trying to keep the colonies in line. Well, he can keep all the Georgia. Good song choice here. The crowd are into it. But I want to know. I still have a chance. And maybe I'll pick a pay for mistake. It's mine not to take. come to enjoy the roles we'll never play segment of West End Live because it's something a bit unexpected you don't know what they're going to sing and you don't know who's going to be the group 
You don't know who's going to be there, and you know you're getting phenomenal vocal yeah. talent. We've He's just had a shout out for the BSL interpreters. You can see one of them down here. And for the first time this year, they are featured on the screens as well. The Mary Poppins. Making it more accessible for everyone in the arena. Nothing will change. This never used to be a sing along song. I think this is something that the film has done. This is my favorite thing here. What happens to her voice when she's mixing the thing? It's so cute! It's the little big things that stay on my mind. It's the little big things you leave behind. And when all is said, and when all is done, you can change the course of the falling sun. Another yeah, brand new musical, so Little Big Things, coming to its Soho place. And to tell a young man's story, a true story that is so inspirational, it feels a real honour to be able to tell the story of a real man. It really is such a beautiful show and I really hope we can share it with all you guys. Please come and see us and support us, please. this groundbreaking new show. about passion it's all about fire latin music not to be confused with the musical sexy passion hips <laughs> You have to appreciate the energy of like coming out, giving us a ballad, and then like, just kidding, bam, Shakira. This is vocal extreme. Apparently they are not three of the same man. If Pitch Perfect was a movie about choir and man, these guys would be the villains. Am I wrong? Tell me I'm wrong. Meanwhile, Aaron James has been for essentials. Hymns! Awaiting the cast of I Wish My Life Were Like a Musical. Oh, it's beginning. about musical theatre superfans, Carl Malay. Okay, I get three out of four of these, you guys. We have Alphaba, we have Hamilton, we have Phantom. But Jen Caldwell in the blue and the red looks like Paddington Bear. Is it meant to be Les Mis? Am I being really dumb? Is she a garden gnome? What's going on here? Okay, she's got a flag. I'm assuming Les Mis. There you go. The cast of I Wish My Life Were Like a Musical. Coming to London, coming to the Edinburgh Fringe. Another new musical treat for us now, coming soon to Southwark Playhouse. We have leading lady Alice Fern and the cast of Then Now Next. Then Now and Next. This very soon, and I'm excited about it Friday. now. This Friday. See you there. Opens this Friday at the Southern Playhouse. Get your tickets, everybody. Now bringing you a preview of Lizzie, new production coming soon to the Hope Mill Theatre. We have Watson Stage Award winner Lauren Drew of Six, of Legally Blonde, of Heathers. You speak in cold Presenters to 
today, Hiba El Shi, taking to the stage herself to give us a Princess Jasmine medley. We just had Beyond These Palace Walls from the stage version. Okay, this is very sweet. Heba, who closed Jamie in the West End as pretty, duetting with Talia, who is about to play the same role on the upcoming tour. Old school, everybody's talking about Jamie Van Aaron and James. They were like, would you come and close West End Live? And I sort of pictured like a little tent somewhere. It was, it's just so musical theatre to go, how are we going to close this show? Let's wheel out a middle-aged man who just arrived on a line bike. Being a bit of a stagehound myself, my principle in these situations is do the highest risk thing. Groundhog Day is a total uh, head case of a musical. It's all very dialogue and song integrated, so there's not many easy standalone ballads. But probably my favourite song in the show is the top of the second act, and it's sung by a beautiful young woman who in the first act is just kind of the cliched bimbo. And the second act is all about us doing better at seeing one another for who we are, walking in the shoes of other people. So I'm gonna walk in the shoes of a very beautiful 28-year-old woman and sing for you, playing Nancy. I've just been told not to stand on that bit, which of course means I will definitely be standing on that bit again. <laughs> Play whatever role I'm casting We'll smile with perfect teeth And grimace underneath It isn't easy to break free See, you say that, Tim Minchin. It's since that's not how it works. Someone's gonna sing the trumpet part. Thank you so much. Well done, guys. Thank you. That was really good fun. I'm here with Matt. Hello. Do you want to tell us what time you got here this morning? About 7 a.m. 7 a.m. What's been your highlight of today? Um, the Disney stuff right at the start. And obviously Tim Minchin closing the show. It's just been an epic day. And with that, West End Live day one comes to an end. I am tired, I am warm, but I've had a great day. A great day of musical theatre, both classic and new. Having a great time, bopping along in Trafalgar Square. Has to be done, has to be done. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope that you enjoyed either remembering West End Live day one or seeing it through our eyes if you weren't able to make it. Like I said before, I will be reviewing all of the performances from West End Live, letting you know what I thought about the song choices, the performances themselves. So stay tuned for that one on my channel. Make sure you're subscribed. I hope that everyone is staying safe and you have a stagey day. For 10 more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey, thanks for watching. Have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>